Disney may buy 21st Century Fox, and here is what that would mean for our comic book superhero fans at Marvel. So there are a few major conglomerate companies that hold major franchises. Number two of that is Disney, which holds not only most of the fairy tales in the world, but ABC, ESPN, Pixar, Lucasfilm, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now at number four of these conglomerates is 21st Century Fox, home of Fox Broadcasting, Sky, and Fox News. So it's a pretty big deal that the number two in entertainment might be buying the number four in entertainment. That's a major shift in sort of the entertainment landscape. What CNBC is reporting is that these talks are not happening right now, but someone obviously leaked out that the talks were happening, which affected stocks. So basically, someone wants us to know that this is happening, and they want to see what public opinion would be of Disney buying Fox. Here's what you need to know. Now, if Disney were to buy Fox, they would only be able to buy the entertainment portion of Fox that's up for sale. So that means they would be able to buy like the Sky Channels, Star Channels would be up for grabs, and most important. Disney would also get the franchises that the movie studio owns. That includes the Ice Age franchise, the Kingsman movies, Planet of the Apes, the Maze Runner, and oh, dot, 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 a little segment of a large comic franchise that was hurting for cash in the late 1990s, Marvel's The X-Men and The Fantastic Four. Oh my gosh, please get The Fantastic Four. I recently, I recently watched the, the one that they just came out with and 2015, 2016, and boy, was it a snooze fest. Uh, I don't you know. You saw the cast too, and you're like, this is gonna be great. And yeah, then they had Michael B. Jordan as the human torch. I was like, I'm on board. And then I, I was, I, how am I falling asleep in this? I really like Miles Teller too. Yeah, I do. So uh, for those of you that might not know, the reason why you've never seen the X Men crossover with the Avengers or Spider Man, all those reboots with Andrew Garfield, um, and that was because in order to avoid bankruptcy in the late 1990s, uh, those con, those characters were contracted out to Fox and Sony because they Marvel didn't, I guess maybe they didn't know that the potential that they had for creating the Marvel Cinematic Universe, maybe they didn't have the capital to create it at that time. Then they produced Iron Man, Iron Man was such a huge hit that Disney came calling um, within weeks of that and now, you know, the rest is history. Now we have the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we have, you know, Thor Ragnarok is in theaters, now it's supposed to be the best uh, Marvel movie um, that they have ever produced. The Captain America Civil War was the best one before that. So now, you know, it's just, it's a well oiled machine. Well, and it's lacking, I guess, importance. I'm not excited about superhero movies anymore because there are so many of them. Uh -huh. And I think. But, but Caroline, but would you be excited if the X Men were now contracted out to uh, their rightful owners, as some say, the Marvel studio? Because the MCU was working with one hand tied behind their back. It was making movies about what are actually their secondary characters, though most people forget that now. Their primary ones were all owned by other people. Disney was patient, though. The contract, which seemed totally logical when Sony and Fox signed it, said if it didn't have a movie in production every 18 months using those characters, the right would revert back and so now it looks like uh those uh, the rights are going to be reverting back, or Disney might just buy 20, 21st Century Fox, which would mean that they would have the X Men. They already have uh, Spider Man because Sony just drove that franchise into the ground. So some people are saying this would be exciting. Now other people, including all the guys in the sound booth before we went to tape, were saying uh, that this is actually something to be cautiously excited about because they they don't always enjoy the treatment of. Uh, Comic book characters by a, by the Disney Corporation because they are sort of too family friendly with it. Uh, Bart, our sound engineer, pointed out that in Iron Man, for example, they never really deal with Tony Stark's alcoholism, which they might have done in for uh, you know if you think of like a Logan esque type treatment of Iron Man. Logan was uh, the, is the an X Men movie and uh, with Hugh Jackman, it was the, probably the final one of him as Hugh Jackman, maybe. And it's great. It's, yeah, well, you've seen it, yeah. yeah. So you know that that's like a darker treatment of a comic book character. And that is something that I never really explored or knew about is hearing these dark sides of a lot of superheroes. You know, when they're brought to mainstream, you kind of lose the dark struggles. And I know, especially with Disney, I think that will happen. You know, they were talking about how Disney likes to follow a formula, and if you, you know, step out of the line, they're not going to produce that. So yeah, well, it's it's an interesting dynamic because on the one hand, you have you know 
this this gaggle of idiots in the studio here being like, we want the dark side. But then Disney knows that the more families you can bring into theater, the more lucrative it is for them. So even though critically, you know, you'll have fans say, oh, we wish it would have been a little bit darker or grittier. You know, I, I feel like we all miss the days of um, Christopher Nolan's Batman franchise. You know, yeah. that was what we want, and that was a, that was a huge cash cow as well. You don't get that from Marvel, and in part that is. That is because it's owned by Disney now. Well, and they're trying too hard to please everyone. You know, there's a lot of Disney movies. John Carter lost hundreds of thousands of dollars because they were trying to make it appeal to too many people. And in the interim, kind of, it kind of stunk. Yeah. So and nobody really liked it. <laughs> and they were, supposed, they were supposed to have like a John Carter land. It was supposed to be another <laughs> huge moment for Disney where they was going to have a John Carter, you know, amusement park or something. And that, well, it obviously doesn't exist. Although I would be really interested to see the plans for that because I never even <laughs> saw that movie. I wonder like, what would the rides be? Uh, I have no idea. I guess we'll see what happens. It is interesting that this information is being leaked out just so that we can all, uh, they, wanna, they wanna gauge the public reaction, especially to uh, investors and how the stocks are gonna respond. So that's always sort of curious. I yeah. feel like we're part of their stupid plan. <laughs> um, I, But also there's a sentimental part of me that, that's like the X-Men, and, and Fantastic Four especially, You've, we've seen that they have not been a, well, actually X-Men aside, Fantastic Four especially uh, has not been able to reach its full potential outside of Marvel ownership. I would like to see what Marvel could do when it has the rights to uh, Fantastic Four. X-Men, we'll see. Again, uh, they had some really good movies in that franchise, but, but it would be really cool to see the X-Men and the Avengers sort of join forces. That could be cool. Oh yeah, I think. Speaking of cash cows, you get all the superheroes on one screen. People are are gonna be down and spend money to do it. But yeah, I don't know. I just want to see another comic book movie like Watchmen, where there is you know more depth to it, and you're dealing with you know serious issues that every human being goes through on a daily basis, as opposed to I'm gonna punch through this wall and save the girl. Did you like the film adaptation of Watchmen? I did. Mm -hmm. I, of course, I like the comic um, a lot more, but mm -hmm. I, th I thought they did a really cool job, had some great actors in it, and I've seen it a few times. I super enjoyed it. <laughs> so super, so more <laughs> more Watchmen, uh, less X-Men, actually, I have no idea. We wanna hear from you guys in the comment section below. This is a multifaceted topic, so I'd be really curious, especially from uh, those of you guys who read the comics, uh, if you're a Marvel fan, um, what do you think of their treatment of the movies so far? Are you looking forward to X-Men potentially being back on their roster? Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and we will see you next time on Pop Trigger.